Singapore's goal of becoming a 5G innovation hub has just received a $40 million boost. The money will go into 5G research and innovation, as well as efforts to speed up digitalization in industries. Communications and Information Minister Asis Warren announced this at a Smart Nation Innovations Week event today. Deborah Wong with more. We have identified six strategic clusters which we believe will generate the most value for Singapore and have the greatest exportability potential for the global ecosystem. These include maritime operations, urban mobility, smart estates, industry 4.0, government applications, and consumer applications. We want to be at the forefront globally in exporting such innovative and impactful use cases. Part of the $40 million kitty will go to grants. For instance, the Infocom Media Development Authority, or IMDA, has teamed up with maritime agencies to study the potential use of drones and autonomous vessels in ports. Telcos Singtel and M1 will work with port operator PSA to address efficiency and productivity needs. This will be especially useful when port activities are consolidated in Tuas Megaport. Imagine, for example, if we have devices which are cheap enough, we can embed it within, uh, for example, a life jacket. And if, let's say, in a case of an incident and uh, we have people in the water, and if they're wearing these life jackets, immediately with that connectivity, you can actually locate them. You can then uh, commence your search and rescue operations, uh, and this can be weather independent. Such trials also speed up digitalization in industries. For example, two government agencies in Singtel have signed a deal to test 5G applications in a factory environment. It could be in the area of our sensor, collecting data for real-time analysis and uh, analytics. It could be in the area of our robotics, ability to uh, use bots and remote bots to uh, control the manufacturing process, uh, especially in the areas of our hazardous environment where you can actually manage bots and uh, control the environment from afar. A series of 5G open test bits will also be launched to provide a space for industries to test applications. Now, the first will be at IMDA's Pixel Building in One North to cater to the tech and media startup community. It's expected to open in the first half of next year. Mr. Iswaran says the key to driving these initiatives is collaboration. Amidst the current uncertainties and challenges, such mutually beneficial partnerships and exchanges are needed more than ever. The National Research Foundation will also launch research grant calls in the next few months to fortify 5G cybersecurity and boost network resilience. And to further support innovative solutions in smart estates, IMDA will work with real estate developers and public housing authority HDB. Singapore's Smart Nation Innovations Week is in full swing with a series of events showcasing what it says are Asia's most innovative developments. And the main event is InnoVest Unbound, where innovators from all over the world share their experiences with one another and explore opportunities in the region. One of the panel participants is Namal Rajapaksa, who is a lawmaker in Sri Lanka and son of former President Mahinda Rajapaksa. We have him right here in the studio to tell us some more about what he's been up to. So tell us, Namal, about uh, tech and innovation and what's happening in Sri Lanka. Well, I mean, uh, as you, we all know, Sri Lanka has gone through a bad phase during LTT. And we had two civil uh, youth uprisings in Sri Lanka, one with LTT and other one in the south. So LTT ended up became one of the ruthless terrorist organizations. So unfortunately, last 30, 40 years, Sri Lanka hasn't been able to concentrate much on innovation or uh, building an ecosystem based on innovation. But last 10 years or so, uh, ever since we defeated the organization in 2009, uh, there have been different, different steps taking place mm. to build uh, ecosystems based on innovation and to promote entrepreneurship and, and to uh, promote startups. So one of the key areas that uh, we are looking at is modern innovation. On, on different sectors and uh, of course the e-governance, uh, the traditional uh, moving, shifting away from the traditional governing and make it more feasible and approach uh, for, the, for the communities to uh, engage with the, with, the, with the government mechanism. And um, there have been a huge economic boost that took place in 2009 and we were looking at about GDP growth of about 8.5% uh, at one time. And um, we also got into uh, building uh, tech cities. Mm. 
that, uh, that we call IT centers or IT cities to promote innovation and startups. So Sri Lanka has a great future and uh, now we are picking up on these areas. But what do you see as some of the challenges? Do you mm -hmm. see infrastructure as perhaps maybe being one of the challenges you know you face in building um, you mm -hmm. know the uh, innovations in Sri Lanka? Yeah, of course, one is infrastructure and the cost of uh, infrastructure. At the, and at the same time, the biggest challenge we have is consistency in policies, because uh, the political instability always uh, a key. Stability is always a key. Unfortunately, Sri Lanka has been going through turbulence when it comes to stability in politics, and also for the last. 30 to 40 years we have been going through different different phases with LTT and also uh, youth uprising in the south. So the biggest challenge I would say is to bring political stability back to the country and at the same time have consistency in policies and also shift the challenge of modern politicians to shift from the traditional mechanism to innovative ecosystem. So that will pave the way for youngsters or the next generation to take over all these innovative uh, uh, ideas. So what lessons are you hoping to bring back with you then from what you picked up uh, here during this event and from other South ASEAN mm -hmm. countries? Well, of course, I mean, uh, if you look at Singapore, the political stability and continuation of policies is key here. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, how you approach the youngsters or the inventors mm -hmm. or the startups and how you mentor them. You know, it's, it's, not all, it's not about funding them. It's all about mentoring them as well and guiding them as to what is the next step. And this is something that we believe Countries like Sri Lanka or island nation, we are, we are just, just about 20 million population. And for innovation, for startup, for back offices or BPOs, KPOs that we talk about, you know, the scale of the country doesn't matter. It, what matters is what sort of partnership that you get into. So we believe Sri Lanka, Maldives, Bhutan, even uh, Nepal, even Bangladesh has got into uh, e-governance, getting into e-governance at this stage. So countries like us can benefit. Uh, from these kind of uh, forums and also these kind of uh, getting involved in these kind of uh, in a, uh, platforms. But at the same time, we believe um, that there's a huge technological battle going between the big nations at the moment. So this is where we have to come, they have to come and help us to build our innovation and build our ecosystems around it so we can be a progressive partner. For, the, for those developing countries. Right. Speaking of that partnership, you know, let's talk about the Belt and Road Initiative because in your constituency, you have the Hambatota Port Project. How do you see that fitting in with technology as mm -hmm. well as um, innovation? See, well, Hambatota Port is located in one of the key maritime routes in the, in, in, in the region, so which, which took Sri Lanka to the maritime map. And it is not just an isolated port. It is connected with the aviation, so with the, with the airport as well. So it's a sea and air cargo, air cargo, transshipment hub. So these kind of investments will bring other additional industries into the region, into the country. And that will not only create employment, but that, will, that, that industries will create the need of new technology. So this is where we believe um, the country should benefit. The country's stability and the policy mm. should be able to, policy makers should be able to uh, enhance that, uh, those investments and bring it back to the people. So I believe that is a great opportunity for us, and especially the Hambantara report. Uh, being developed and the aviation sector, not only the Hambantar port, even the Kalambu port city and other, other, other ports, even Trincomalee, uh, five ports around the country. But if, if at all, if Sri Lankans want to benefit of, out of it, then I think uh, we should manage it properly and also give the opportunity for our next generation to be part of the progressive partners of this development. When you're a young man yourself, speaking about the next generation, only in your early mid 30s, uh, what is it you hope you know you want to see Sri Lanka? How to, how it, you want it to see develop in tech and innovation in the next five to ten years? See, uh, as I earlier stated, uh, I must reiterate that political stability is key, and at the same time, continuation of policies. And the policymakers, the politicians, or the policymakers should not fear to change from the traditional mechanism to innovative mechanism. Mm -hmm. So we can shift into e-governance, we can shift into technology, mm -hmm. and at the same time, create the opportunity, build opportunity for Sri Lankans and youth in our region uh, to take part in uh, these ecosystems that can provide them facilities and build the, and make the ideas realistic. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you so much for coming thank in and talking with us. Namal Rajapaksa, MP for Hambantota District in Sri Lanka.